today I'm going to fix up one of these cheapo eBay Nikkor tube clones. The tube is a, a really nice light, the real one, and uh, these cheap clones get the mechanics mostly right, but the, uh, the UI and everything else is just terrible. So let's fix this one up. So on the board here, there is the microcontroller, a MOSFET or transistor to run the LED, a USB port for charge input, the LTC4054 LiPo charger, and a charge indicator LED, and of course the switch. So the first thing to do is to remove that because we'll be replacing it with our own. We'll also remove this just because we don't know exactly what it is. And then I'm going to set the current for the uh, charger because usually it's done improperly. So the LTC4054, uh, if you look at the data sheet, um, I ran the calculation included in there for a 50 milliamp charge current and that came out to a 20K reference. Um, so I looked around and found an 18K resistor, so that's what I'll replace that with. Charge current should be set to, according to the data sheet, 55 milliamps. All right, it's time to clear all this stuff off. The LED is um, direct driven through this transistor. You can see there's no resistor in the current path, so we'll address that as well as replacing the transistor with something known. So that's gonna come out. This is a uh, current limiting resistor for the base of the presumably BJT because it's between pin 1 of that transistor and the microcontroller. I'm going to be replacing it with a MOSFET so we won't need that to limit current anymore. Since I'm going to add a current limiting resistor for the main LED, uh, I need to set what I want that drive current to be. Normally these just direct drive it and it uh, is not really good for the LED or the battery so I like to set that to a sane current. I think a good one for LEDs like this is 50 milliamps. It's a good amount of light for a light like this. So I've set my power supply to limit at 50 just to measure the VF there and that is 2.8 volts at 50 milliamps. So the new resistor I need will be, I'm going to set 50 milliamps at max when the battery is fully charged. So the voltage drop would be 1.4, so I need a 28 ohm resistor to limit that to 50 milliamps. I looked around and found this 21 ohm resistor, which will have to be close enough. So assuming the VF doesn't change that much, we will have uh, 1.4 over 21 is 66 milliamps max and the battery is getting fairly low down to 33 that should be fine so that resistor needs to go between the negative side of the LED and the drain of the MOSFET. So you can see this big wide trace connecting those. So I'm just gonna cut right here uh, to make a place for that resistor. Next I'll replace that transistor with a known part. This is a PMV22EN N-channel MOSFET, which is extreme overkill for this, but 
I keep a lot of those around, so that's what I'll use. Up next is the new microcontroller. This is the chip that I use in my MELD flashlight drivers, a PIC16F 1575. I've already programmed this with a version that is for uh, white only flashlights, no color, and rechargeable, so it removes anything that requires a power cycle. So I will just mount that upside down right there where the old one was. Okay, it's time to wire in this chip. I use 34 gauge magnet wire for this. That works pretty well. And the uh, first thing I'll do is just tin the pads that are going to actually be connected. And there are only four. Ground, VCC, uh, switch, and the LED output. This wire is easily stripped by just melting or burning away the uh, enamel. So here's ground going down to what would have been pin 8 on the original part. And VCC will go up to what used to be pin 1. This one is the LED uh, PWM output, and since we've removed that resistor, I'll just connect it straight to there instead of to the original microcontroller pad. This is the switch connection, which will go to that, what used to be pin 5. Okay, that's all the electronics done. So we can do a full test before connecting the battery. We've got the power supply on 3.6 volts and limiting current at 100 milliamps just in case something is wrong. So maximum draw is 40 milliamps here so that's in line with what we expected and obviously the UI is working so now we know everything's good except the battery charger so we'll have to connect the battery to test that I'm going to re-strip and tin these to clean them up So just to check the charging current, I will uh, connect the, I'll connect 5 volts to the charge chip directly via the bench supply so that I can measure the current. So looking at the data sheet for this, VCC is on 4 and ground is on 2, but I can pick up ground there. 
So there's our charge LED on and the charge current is 57 milliamps, exactly what we expected. Okay, some final mechanical modifications. Uh, I find that the switches on these are way too loud and that annoys me, so um, a little piece of electrical tape over that, between that and the rubber boot seems to quiet it down significantly. And then I don't want the battery to rattle, so I put a piece of foam tape in there. Looks like that shelf there is interfering with my solder connection. And a final mechanical modification is to add one of these magnets behind the keychain ring and that will allow it to uh, hang from a steel object. Okay, so now this is ready. I like the clear one because you can see what you've done in there. And uh, let's check the battery voltage. Three point eight. I can test charging via the real connector, and that works. So this is now running um, what is essentially my meld firmware, which I'll put a link to. And it is the only difference is this is the um, version for white only, so no RGB, and for rechargeable. So a few of the items are stripped out that would require a power cycle, but otherwise it has everything. Uh, brightness ramping, shortcuts, configurable strobe battery monitor and then some um, special modes such as uh, this lightning simulator some safety flashers a randomized strobe and uh, smart momentary all right thanks for watching